people keep framing this as though this is an issue of like convincing enough voters that this is a good idea. No, we got the polls. The, the voters are there. This isn't the issue. The issue is why aren't these elected officials accountable enough to their voters right. that it's not kryptonite, electoral kryptonite for them to be opposing Medicare for all. Right. Yeah. And I think to Kyle, to your point earlier, what you said about um, build the wall and how it almost became a litmus test for these Republican senators. This is what I mean when this is the evolution of the Tea Party, right? Like the Tea Party kind of evolved into like the Trump right. And they, by doing these spectacle type things, they actually got their uh, representatives to be accountable to what they wanted, even if they had been earlier against it, like Lindsey Graham wasn't, like some of these other people were, and then they had to become hardline Trumpers to feel like they could advance in their party. That's, that's what we need to be doing to hold these blue dog Democrats accountable. Look, you're not going to get reelected if you don't support this. This and, and people are, a lot of objections are saying, oh, we don't have the votes, so like this would be performative, we need to wait, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so what's your plan to, to get these representatives to feel like they need to support this or they're not going to get reelected. What's your plan to do that? Because for us, this is a way to help get us there. By the way, we might only have eight people, but we're, then we start to actually grow that to where the, those co-sponsors actually do feel like they need to vote yes on this legislation. This history is very instructive. 2010, you know, you remember John McCain, who uh, a few years before that, he was working on bipartisan uh, uh, immigration reform, right? Something that might might have included a path to citizenship plus some border security, that kind of that kind of deal, uh, and that fell apart because of opposition from the right, opposition from what became the Tea Party. And in 2010, John McCain faced a challenge from a Tea Party guy, you know, primary challenge, and he swung hard right mm. on immigration, and he ran these ads of him saying, you know, immigrate, you know, illegal immigration is a huge freaking problem. Just build the damn fence. That's what he said in his ads. Just build the damn fence. And this is the guy we was, you know, supposed to be the responsible moderate. And that's just what a little bit of primary pressure managed to accomplish there. Yeah, I think that's right. And look, we can already tell that Democrats, moderate to conservative Democrats are on the ropes because look at the language they've started to use. How many times has Joe Biden tweeted Healthcare is a human right, even though he yep. would veto Medicare for all the pandemic. Right. Jo John Ossoff <laughs> last week tweeted healthcare is a human right when he just gave an interview two weeks ago talking about right. how he doesn't support Medicare for all. Yep. Right. So here's what's happening. They are trying to co-opt the language of this movement because they know very well how popular these issues are, especially in the middle of a pandemic. And people lost their minds when I tweeted, OK, John Ossoff, but you don't support Medicare for all because they're like, oh, my God, you're going to make him lose in Georgia. I didn't make him lose in Georgia. He could support Medicare for all. Right, and in fact, that part. would make him a better candidate in, in Georgia, you know. And so there there seems to be this weird instinct to put the onus on activists to help politicians keep their jobs. As opposed to understanding that activists are supposed to be pushing politicians to be more responsive to the interests of the communities they represent. Yeah. And, and by the way, they've always everybody makes the argument every step of the way. The fight is too hard. Not now. The fight is right. too hard. Not now. I remember because when we co-founded Justice Democrats, there were people who laughed at us. And they were like, you're going to get zero wins, quite literally. You're going to get zero wins. You have zero institutional power, zero name recognition, no money, no big donors, no nothing. You're going to get zero wins. Now there's over a dozen Justice Democrats. Now, hilariously enough, the same people who were MIA when we started Justice Democrats and were pushing for Justice Democrats didn't have a goddamn word to say in support of any of the Justice Democrats. Now those same people are the biggest heroes trying to defend the Justice Democrats from the same people who founded it critiquing them. <laughs> right. Because it's it's always the same point. Oh, the fight's too hard. Can't do it now. Really? We just got rid of Joe Crowley, who's one of the most powerful Democrats in the country. I know the fight was hard, but guess what? You got to at least get in the ring if you want to if you want to win. Right. And so now yeah. we're making the same argument of, yeah, the fight might be really hard. We agree. It's overwhelmingly likely that the Medicare for all vote will fail. But right. you know what? There are upsides even if it does fail. And what about the 10 percent chance it doesn't fail where we twist enough arms and we make enough phone calls and march enough on Washington and scare them enough where, like you said, Brianna, the Overton window is already shifting. Every single Medicare for all supporting Democrat won. And and we're not using this as like a litmus test. That'd be crazy. Right. Like, of course, we have to do that and we should do that. And they need to feel the pressure. And guess what? Also, the fact that 118 Democrats nominally support Medicare for all now on paper 
You want to know who else was uh, instrumental in having that happen? Myself, Jank Uger, Jimmy Dore, and all the lefty uh, shows which went out there, and we were pushing the the petition on that, and we were mm -hmm. telling people to call the call their Congress people, and that's when the number of people supporting it went from like ten to yeah. one hundred and eighteen, yeah. and so now it's like, okay, okay, we understand that everything you guys did to this point was worked and was good and moved <laughs> us in the right direction, but now seriously, you guys got to slow down and you got to wait, and then don't tell me don't tell me to give you an exact date as to when we can do this stuff and when we should do this stuff. But right now, all I know is you need to wait. It's just, it's, it's, it's obnoxious that half our allies, half of our allies end up kind of getting in the way of helping us here.